If you don't think there's hope for the world, why bother going on? You haven't seen the world, so you don't know. I'm certainly aware of the, the video game curse. Um, the, the easy part was that I got the best story ever told in video games, in my opinion, this incredible relationship and a video game that naturally lent itself, I thought, to um, long form storytelling. The trick is to love it. Honestly, it's as simple as that. Love it and love the characters, love the relationships, love the world, love all the little details, understand it, play it over and over. All of these things then lead into a place where you can carry the soul through. The other incredible benefit I had was that I was making it with Neil Druckmann. So A, I knew I was never going to be able to break anything because he was there. But also Neil just loved the adaptation process. He wasn't scared. He wasn't precious. Sometimes I had to argue with him about doing things exactly the same because I come at it from the fan point of view. But the simple answer is just a true understanding of the material and a love for it. That's essential. Anything else is sort of calculated and cynical and probably won't work. You know, we at Naughty Dog created a game that, you know, I told a compelling story about Joel and Ellie's journey in the interactive medium. Now, there are parts of it that are not interactive, like cutscenes, but, you know, a lot of it works because we're creating a certain immersion that makes you feel like you're Joel or another part of the game, like you are Ellie. I didn't want to be too precious about everything because I feel like that would hurt the adaptation process where certain things I knew would have to change when we go from this medium to the other. Like if these kind of long extended action sequences that you're playing, if we just sort of put them on the screen, it would be make for a very boring show, even though it makes for a really compelling game. So that's why I was, I was, that's one of the reasons why I kind of kept an open mind. The other one was I wrote the first game. I was a sole writer on it. Here I have a writing partner. So it would be foolish of me not to lean in to say here, look, Craig is a brilliant writer. What ideas is he going to bring to the table? How can he help elevate or expand or just go on really interesting detours? You know, there's a famous concept art that we had for the game. Uh, made by Hyung Nam, where you see Joel and Ellie sitting by a campfire and laughing. And that, that was a moment we just couldn't make work in the game. So that was one of the conversations I had with Craig of like, well, how do we capture that? Is there a way to get kind of these downbeat moments? Again, wouldn't afford any gameplay, which is why we couldn't do them in the game, but we could put them in the show and really expand on them. And then the other one, so much of The Last of Us is perspective. No one is truly like good or truly bad. They all have to live in these shades of gray and they're, they're trying to do the best they can with their own life philosophy. And then to explore the other side of like, again, people that would just in the game were this obstacle like this villainous obstacle. Um, and we try to expand them, you know, with notes that you pick up. So again, something we couldn't do in the show. So for example, the hunters now get, you get to see more of like, well, where did they come from? Why did they bring down this quarantine zone? Who is their leader? Those are all things we get to see in the show. Somewhere out west, they're working on a cure. I think what really impressed them was the fact that I didn't turn into a monster. 